Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So the planet is suffering. The planet is changing, as it always done. But the speed of change increased since the beginning of the industrial era. And there has been a dramatic uh, uh, acceleration of this change in the past few decades. This is mostly due to human beings' actions, our style of life, how we produce energy, produce food, exploit the resources. Our number, we're always increasing. And the way in which we relate to the planet, or use it better yet, um, is risking to jeopardize the availability of these very same resources we are counting on to keep going. So there are visible, open, sometimes scientifically proven effects of this change. The most talked about is the climate change, increase in temperature, we just heard about it. Um, everybody talks about that. Uh, scientists, uh, environmentalists, politicians, people on the street. And it's due to the increase in the gas emission, I again, in due to the increase in the human activities. But there, is, there are other effects. Another, I think, as dramatic effect uh, is the accumulation of garbage, garbage waste, a very complicated issue. We are submerged by garbage, submerged by garbage. And we don't need to go to a landfill site to see a scenario of this sort. There's everywhere, a pile of garbage in the in, in, in environment, in cities, although in the small scales. And the worst part of all is that a big chunk of this garbage is actually plastic, plastic pollution. Again, we are submerged by this. Plastic pollution is increasing, is getting dramatic, and we are witnessing day, day by day. Now, plastic reached any niche of the planet, air, soil, water. It entered our, our food chain, so we're eating it with unfathomable and unpredictable effects on our health in the near future and overall on the future of the planet. So how do we get here in this situation? So first of all, we are producing way too much. So we are about slightly less than 400 million tons per year. And this trend has been going on for a few years. And actually, we have been producing plastic since the 50s, after the Second World War. And, but there's been an increase in the steepness of the curve of production. And you are not getting less production. Because for plastic producers, this is a positive value, which is actually easy because it produces uh, jobs, uh, richness, the economy is, is working. But it produces also plastic pollution is getting dramatic. So what's wrong with plastic? Actually, there is nothing really wrong with plastic. It's a unique material. It's a brilliant material. Um, I bet that you know, each of us has a piece of plastic on, because it can be used in tons of applications. Imagine a, a piece of garment, or a, a badge, a credit card, a mobile. Or we can think of uh, electronic devices in general, computers, tablets, automobile, uh, hospitals, and so on and so forth. So there are two features that makes plastic what it is. Uh, one is the fact that it is inert. If I wrap a piece of food with plastic, I can eat the food, because it, it, the plastic won't react, as far as we know, in the short term. And then the other feature, which is the best and the worst, is the resistance. Plastic is extremely resistant. I will repeat this several times through the, 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 all through the talk. It doesn't go away. So let's take a look at the structure of plastic. OK, so there are different kinds of plastics. This is polyethylene. I think it is the, one of the most resistant, the most produced 30%. If we add the polypropylene and polystyrene, which are kind of similar, let's say, we reach about 70%. So it's a good example. So this is a synthetic polymer derived from fossil fuel, petrol and gas. Synthetic, made in a lab. It does not exist in nature. Polymer is made out of the repetition of small building blocks, which are the monomer. As you can see there, CH2, CH2. Repeated tons of times. C, carbon, H, hydrogen. Very simple. Now, the first line is a, a bit of an approximation, because uh, uh, you have to imagine hundreds of thousands of repetition. Something compact, something like I try to reproduce in the middle, middle picture there. That's an oversimplification as well, because in this structure, there are a small amount of tiny molecules which are that are depicted with, with the colors uh, squares. They are the additives that allow the plastic to have the shape that we know. So they are, for example, antioxidants, uh, colorants, plasticizers. 
So this is actually more likely as a structural plastic. And this is extremely resistant. It doesn't go away. Um, well, if you throw it in the environment, eventually it will degrade uh, via weathering, meaning light, temperature, uh, mechanical stress. But it's going to take decades. Somebody say centuries, so I'm not sure about that, but many, many years. Many, many years. So what happens to the plastic, to the million of tons we see we are producing every year? The crude reality is that they goes into the environment. That's it. I mean, unfortunately, that's why we are in the situation in which we are with this plastic pollution. Now, a little percentage of it is burned for uh, um, producing energy or not. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's bad for the pollution, gas emission, for our health. And the little bit uh, is recycled. Global-wide, a really tiny bit. Now, recycling. Recycling is a, is a key word nowadays. We have been, we're hearing about recycling and the solution for plastic over and over. Um, it's a very it, it marketable work. It's used for marketing a lot. So recycling, as we are applying, is not working. Um, is not working. The, the logistic, all the, all the features, we will talk about that. Now, uh, recycling, this, this key word, in fact, uh, is one of the words that comes out if we think of the solution of the future. So in the future, apart from using less, it will be the, the good start. What are the solutions to get rid of plastic pollution? The first one, in fact, is recycling. As, as I said, it's not working. So all of it, how the countries organize the logistics of it and the, 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 the technology itself. So let's take a look at it. Um, the, the, the recycling we are using, the country applying, is the mechanical recycling. So first of all, only a few kinds of plastic can be recycled. So you have to separate them, wash them, fuse with virgin plastic, and having so the recycled plastic, the product. So the idea, so you put less virgin plastic, less starting material in, in, the, in, the, in the melting pot. So at the end, you're going to have less plastic produced, but I don't see that happening. First. Second, the recycled plastic is not as good as the original one. Eh? And third, this recycling cycle can be applied once or twice. So it's very limited. So I'm not against recycling. I'm all for it. But I think we need to implement it to change, to change the way in which we organize, to change the technology as well. Now, the second way which has been applied and implemented is the use of biopolymers. Biopolymers are polymers derived from renewable sources like uh, sugar, uh, carbohydrates, like, for example, cassava, beetroots, corn. And also, some bacteria can, can produce those bioplastics. Um, which is good, but this bioplastic is not as versatile as the synthetic plastics, and unfortunately, they are not as biodegradable as we thought at the beginning. So something to be implemented as well. The third way, the one I'm betting on, is biodegradation. And I put a question mark because so far there is no technology available. So biodegradation is uh, degradation by biological means. So... Um, you can imagine you have uh, your polymer, you apply your uh, biological means, uh, we would see. And then the, the polymer is broken in small molecules, which could be reused to make plastic, which could be reused themselves if they are good molecules, or thrown into the environment once we know they are not toxic. So there is a little issue here with biodegradation, because this is associated uh, with the beginning of the process, I mean, um, with the bacteria or microorganism, bacteria, fungi. Let let's talk about bacteria, which is to make it simple. In fact, at the beginning, it was discovered some bacteria can do that, can biodegrade these sturdy plastics like polyethylene, um, on the assumption they can eat it, using it as food. Mm, yummy. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't go for carbon hydrogen only. Maybe bacteria go go for that. I don't know. However, whatever is the reason or the the, the molecular device behind that, what we know is the biodegradation by microorganism is extremely slow. We're talking about months. So far, it's something that we, we cannot use as a, as, a, as a biotechnology. But we found insects. So there are some insects that can biodegrade very resistant polymers, like polypropylene, polyethylene, in fact. In the lab, we found uh, the larvae of uh, this Lepidoptera, Galeria melonella, they can biodegrade polyethylene at a very fast rate, within 40 minutes from uh, exposure. And there are others, although this is the fastest. Let's take a look at these larvae. So larvae uh, eat, get bigger, transform in moth, 
must mate, lay eggs, eggs are forming larvae, and so on and so forth. It's a cycle. And this happens there, in the, in the beehive, in the honeycombs. That's their ecological box, their ecological uh, niche. And they eat whatever they find there. Um, larvae from bees, pollen, propolis, and wax. And the reason why the discovery occurred is that I am an amateur beekeeper. So, and as all beekeepers, I, you keep usually some, some, some beehives empty without, without bees, but with wax uh, in a storage room. It happened to me in my place at that time. In the spring, you come and put them back in the field. When I went to put them back in the field, they were plagued with these larvae. They can be, in fact, a plague for beekeepers. So they were eating it all. So I had to clean them and clean them. I put them in a plastic bag. And if you put these in a plastic bag, after a while, you see that the bag comes out full of holes. At that time, seeing that, we decided to analyze the holes, and we found the plastic in the holes were chemically modified, in fact, oxidized, which is the first step of biodegradation. Now, I'm going to show you a, a, little, a little time lapse made by uh, an artist, uh, Maria Angelica, and you can see uh, um, the, the worm making his way to this uh, white sheet, which is polyethylene, in fact. Quite impressive. So how does the worm do that? Well, we don't know. I mean, the molecules, the molecular mechanisms, we are, that, that's what my lab and other labs around the planet are, are trying to find out in this worm and in the other insects. Um, there could be essentially two ways. Uh, or the microorganisms within the gut do the job, or the worm itself. Personally, I bet on the worm. However, we are exploring both paths, and only science and experiments will tell us uh, eventually what is the solution, and, uh, and hopefully soon. Now, what is my ideal scenario? The ideal scenario is we found the molecules, which are actually enzymes. Whatever they're coming from, bacteria or the worm, we produce in the lab, we identify them. Then we produce in the lab in, in buckets, and we pour the buckets on the pile of garbage we have. And the pile of garbage gets biodegraded, and that will use the other word, biorecycled recycled because biodegradation is a form of recycling. You break the molecules into smaller molecule, molecules, it could be used for making plastic or use them themselves or turn into the environment, as far as they're not toxic again. So as you can see, insects are giving us good, some good, uh, good surprise. Um, however, there is an issue with insects. At the beginning, I, I mentioned some of the change, the dramatic change, some of the effect caused by this change the planet is going through. And the climate change, the garbage, and the, the other one, the third one, is the loss of bio biodiversity, extinction of species, which again, always occurred, but the rate, the speed is increasing. And we're always very touched when this happens to a mama, to a nice uh, frog, a salamander, but, but actually it's happening to these little animals here, so these insects, which are small invertebrates. And there have been reports of loss of biomass of these animals in different parts of the world. So they're, they're definitely suffering, which is dramatic, because insects are extremely useful, uh, for, are, are essential for the maintenance of, by, of ecosystem, ecological system. They're essential for the food chain. And even human beings have, be, have been in relation with them for, well, let's say, centuries, for example. This is, this is my personal pet. It's uh, called Samia cincia. It's a beautiful uh, larva, a beautiful insect. It's a silk worm. It produces silk. As you know, we have been using silk for, forever. Or we can think about the honeybee, the most famous, one of the most famous insects, producing honey and propolis, all things, that we, all goodies that we love. But it's also a pollinator, and there are many pollinators. They're essential for us, and they're suffering. They're disappearing as well. So. All these effects are due to several causes. Again, pollution, fragmentation of, wild, of, of uh, green areas, uh, loss of wild areas. And this is really, really dramatic. So there are, these species are a lot. There are many of those. Uh, we are starting looking at some of those, some Lepidoptera, uh, for their features, their shape, their metabolic activity. For example, this is uh, called oleander oak. Among other things, it feeds on uh, oleander leaves, which is toxic. Or this other one. This is a cerura, another little tiny thing. We're just looking at that. It uh, just came out of the egg, which is the little orange disc on the left. And he's trying to find his way. <laughs> Actually, I think he's enjoying his first meal, which is a piece of a leaf. And then it will grow to get a big you know, green patch, beautiful and beautiful red part around the mouth for I don't know what reason. So we are starting looking into that. 
So, so in Zinset, so Zinset are beautiful creatures. Almost all of them. I mean, not all are beautiful. For example, bottom right is uh, this is the, the, um, the larvae of a fly. It's on the disgusting side. Useful, eh? but on the disgusting side, it'd be stinky sometimes. Even Galleria is not at the top. But you know, some of those are beautiful. We can say they are useful. Sometimes they're a plague. I mean, you know, it happens they destroy forests or crops, but you know, this, is, this is not for the purpose of this talk. Let's put it on the side. Let's say these are amazing creatures. We can say they are amazing creatures. Can they give a solution? Uh, an alternative to recycling, for example, a bio-recycling for plastic, for this issue here, for, for garbage, for plastic pollution. Well, I definitely hope so. That's where I bet I put my hopes. And um, let's hope for the best. So I am at the end of my talk, but I don't want to leave you with a pile of garbage because not, not really classy. So I'm going to leave you with a, with a message of life. These are the Samya that I showed you before, just outside the egg. They were just born. They are wandering, they are finding a way. And, and my message here is that I think we need to protect these little fellows here if we want to protect and, and maintain the planet as we know it. Thank you. <laughs>